Good morning, how you guys doing? It's Mike, I'm back with the thought of the day. On this Sunday, I had to come into work today, so um, <clears throat> I thought I'd bring a message to you guys. First, I want to give honor and praise to the Elohim of Israel for waking me up today and giving me the strength and the wisdom to bring you this message. Today, I want to talk about the violence at the basketball games. The violence at the basketball games. Um, Friday, I woke up to two texts. One was of a 22-year-old man getting stabbed at the Trenton High game where they played in, in the Mercer County Championship game against Notre Dame. And then the, the situation with Camden versus Camden Eastside. <clears throat> and many people ask, what's going on at these games and why is it an outbreak of violence that's going on at these basketball games and other sport events? I think there's several factors that play into this. One, I don't think the Camden situation was so much of the kids reacting to a rival situation and the amount of adults that ran on the court made it look worse than what it was. And with the the uh, amount of people that came off the bench, the amount of players that came off each bench, both teams would have had to be disqualified from the state tournament anyway. So the, the school board just jumped in front of it and said, we're going to take them out of the games anyway, take them out of the state tournament. The Trenton situation, I feel that it probably was something that was going on outside of the school. Obviously, if the guy was 22 years old, some street beef that was brought into a basketball event. Um, it still um, scarred the, the Trenton High Championship and just made it look bad on sporting events, period. There is a, a influx of violence when it comes to our youths and surrounding these events. And I just think a society as whole, I just think that right now, this younger generation is desensitized to violence and death. Um, most of the, this era of kids and the era before them were raised by cell phones and tablets. They were given tablets around four years old and given a phone around eight years old and they were told to get out my face. Um, so now these phones and tablets raise these kids and they have access to things that they shouldn't have access to so young and they have become desensitized I think the, the, the social media aspect comes in they're exposed to a lot of things it's a lot of beef on social media um, a lot of back and forth talking and it agitates things to when you play each other when you see each other it takes it to a different level and even the parents the parents have got into it heavy too now because social media has given them a platform to profile their kids and brag about their kids and when things don't go their way they, their feelings get hurt I think it's a music aspect to it the drill music and that kind of rap has desensitized the kids to violence They didn't. that's all they hear in the air all day and they seen rappers die and people they know die and, and when I was young and people used to die especially somebody in our neighborhood we were mourning for over a month now you just scroll down on social media, you say damn, you hit the like button, and you put an RIP with the prayer sign, and then you keep moving like nothing happened. And th that's the state that we're living in now. But I think lastly, and one of the biggest things is, these kids don't have no concept of God, and who God is, and they don't have no boundaries. I recently talked to a couple AAU directors that I knew for years, and I asked them a simple question. I said, how many parents do you guys have to to um, negotiate with about their kids attending the tournaments instead of going to church? And all of them said none. I remember when I was coaching, when I first came into the coaching game, there was definitely a certain amount of kids on the team that 
we had to really convince the parents to let them come to church, come to uh, the basketball tournaments instead of missing church. Even if we had practice during the week, some kids had Bible studies and we had to, or choir rehearsal, where we had to convince the parents to let them come to the practice. Um, was that part of the problem? It probably was, starting it back then, but at least it was parents that used to tell us, no, now, there's no such thing. I remember before coming into this truth, I visited a lot of different churches and even some of the popular churches in the in the Trenton area. And there was no kids there, especially teenagers. There was no youth choir singing. There was none of that kind of stuff. They're totally absent from the church body, even though I don't believe in all of the doctrine, believe in all the doctrine that the black Christian church is teaching, but it gave you a foundation of that there is a God and it gave us some boundaries that we needed to follow, understanding that we couldn't go that far. Now, there's no boundaries. And people um, want to ask, why is everybody so violent? Violent is the regular thing now. To be non-violent is weird. Also, when I was coming up and when I began teaching, most of the class were good kids and you had maybe four or five knuckleheads. Now, it seemed like it's reversed. And finally, I promise this is finally, the violent culture has spilled over into the athlete. Growing up, athletes, especially good athletes, were separate from that culture. The drug dealers, the, the guys in the community protected you and they made sure none of that came near you and you was never involved or even thought about being involved in any kind of violent things. Now, the basketball players are have has merged over into the athlete. Now, they don't have the guys in the community that's telling the athletes and the, the so-called stars and people of that nature not to be involved. Look, just look around college, how many athletes you see getting caught with guns, getting caught with in all types of situations that before they wouldn't even think about being involved in. They were protected by the community and by other people. Now that protection is gone, and a lot of athletes are getting involved in things that normally they, they wouldn't even touch, they wouldn't even think about doing. And I think it's a cultural thing in terms of the relationship with NBA players and rappers and this and that. So the young kids see it and they think it's a part of life, like to be involved in that type of activities. And it's not. It's sad that we have turned away from the most high in such a way that when you mention it to people, they cringe and they get upset. But I'm a guy that always thinks about solutions and that's the solutions. That's the solution. Find the church that's going to teach you and your kids the statutes, laws, and commandments and turn around and serve him with all your heart and will. And he said he would give you everything that you desire anyway. Because right now, we are, very, we are definitely self-destructive self -destructive mode as a people. And things are only going to get worse. I pray that these kids and everybody learn from these situations and become better people. And I pray that we turn back to the Most High and serve him and obey his statutes, laws, and commandments. This is Brother Mike. Enjoy your Sunday. Shalom.